Yeah, hello, welcome to Have A Go, and I'm Alan. As you just saw, this tends to go wobble, wobble, wobble when the lathe is going. I'm pretty sure this is mostly due to the, to the belt I'm using, which is a rubber V-belt. And the rubber doesn't like having to continuously move around and change its shape like this, and it bounces. Yeah, because it's elastic, it's rubber. So I'm hoping... And if I replace it with this nice shiny link belt, this might even improve matters. I've never worked with a link belt before, so this should be interesting. Get an idea of the length we need. You might be asking yourself, if this stuff is so great, how come... You didn't use it originally. The answer to that is that because, well, one, it didn't occur to me, and two, this stuff is insanely expensive. Like this link belt, or well, the rubber one, was about $20 for the belt. This link belt was $100 a metre. There we go, two parts. I'll put this short little shorty bit into storage. And I'm going to have to do some disassembly to get the rubber belt off. Lovely. I've got the motor on a block at the moment to raise it up a bit. Right, I'm going to have to loosen the other side too. I don't need to undo this side completely, just enough that I can wiggle the shaft to get the belt loose. Yay, it was enough. Now to put the bolts back on. I'm going to need to take the whole spindle off to get the belt out from around this part of the cone pulley setup. To which I can only say, oh goody. Take the drive belt off, such as it is. There's a lot of grease on there. I'm going to take advantage of this being off in order to drill some better flats on the shaft for the shaft collars to grip onto. Alright, take this out because that was the main objective. Look at that grease. Well, it used to be grease. Now it's just dirty and gone. Not the other way around, Alan. I had that placed so that with the face plate on it would just poke through. So you, can, so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm pulling on the shaft at the same time that I'm putting that collar on in order that I can get a wee bit of preload on the bearings effectively. I'm pretty sure I'll need to take a link out of this thing. But we'll see. I have been told that there is a direction for this. So the direction is that when, when the, the, it goes over the pulley, 
you want these tabs on the bottom of it to be trailing so that they walk into it rather than being forced into it like if it was going the other way. I think I will take a link off this. Perhaps even two links. Now I was told that the way to put them in is to flip the belt around and then work at it from that direction. And once the belt is a loop, flick it back around. Thank you, aeroplane. Now to test this thing. A little bit noisier, but it's a lot less bouncier, which is a big improvement. Like this isn't bouncing back and forth so much. Once it runs in, it should be even better. Let's oil the bearings while I'm at it. Okay, there is one problem. The belt's thick enough that it won't go on to the slowest speed anymore. And here and now, I can live with that. <laughs> 